to people to for the food for facility punch of financial products by 2019 indianmoney.com was india's largest financial education company with over 9 million customers and 600 employees <laughs> for building a global enterprise made him explore building an app based financial education platform he decided to launch the financial freedom workshop to pilot the new business model the workshop was conducted to train people on the four things they do with money like save spend invest and borrow he has conducted overall 28 workshop from 3rd of november 2019 to 6th of march 2020 and personally met more than 7000 people during that time he learned that people are keener to learn how to make enough money for living than money management and decided to upgrade the company from just a financial education company to a lovely livelihood education company Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Subhi is a man of motivation and inspiration to youth of India and to budding entrepreneurs. He has developed Freedom App on 20th March of 2020. is India's largest livelihood education app, which provides highly resourceful, innovative ideas and videos, comprising of over 820 courses on farming, small. a uh, business and personal finance in english and other languages like hindi kannada telugu tamil and malayalam serving 8 million users <laughs> mr subhi peers under his leadership has been endorsed by the center for financial inclusion at action research on innovative products and services drive financial capability through behavior change funded by jp norgan attended digital at life harnessing digital for customer value workshop conducted by infid business school at singapore attended global leadership program summit at san francisco addressed mint intech summit held at mumbai further sir is one of the speaker for next generation digital at rbi's digital banking event sir has conducted be wise and get rich workshop for the employees of vijay karnataka also conducted for the employees of karnataka state finance corporation that is kfc and many more sakansidya beku sarya beku jaasti de a very happy sir yen helta idare makkalu beku antidare really it's a big round of applause for you व्यक्ति नम देश प्रधान नम जो विषय नम जो अंतराष्ट्रीय मटदेश संस्थे मोबाइल गूगल फ्रीडम डाट कॉम अभी हलवर आश्रय तम बदकते व्यक्ति नम जो श्री सुधीर रवर ट्यूटर्स पाठ कौशलता 
ನಮಗೆ ದುಡಿದು ಕೊಡುವಂತದ್ದು ಮತ್ತು ಹಣವನ್ನು ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಸಮರ್ಪಕವಾಗಿ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಬಳಸಿದರೆ ಅದು ಬದುಕಿಗೆ ಆಧಾರ ಸ್ತಂಭವಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಎತ್ತರ ಮಟ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುತ್ತದೆ ಅನ್ನುವುದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಸಾಧಕರು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂದು ನಮ್ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ನಂತರ ತಂತ್ರಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಬಳಸಿಕೊಂಡರೆ ಏನನ್ನು ಬೇಕಾದರೂ ಸಾಧನೆ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ನಾವು ಎತ್ತರಕ್ಕೆ ಬೆಳೆಯಬಹುದು ಮತ್ತು ಜಗತ್ತನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಬೆಳೆಸಬಹುದು ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತೀಯತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕವನ್ನು ಅಂತಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ಮಟ್ಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರತಿನಿಧಿಸಿ ನಾವು ಎಲ್ಲದರಲ್ಲೂ ಮೇಲುಗೈ ಅನ್ನುವುದಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ನಮ್ಮೊಂದಿಗೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಇವರು ನಮ್ಮ ಶಿವಮೊಗ್ಗದವರು ಎಂದು ಹೇಳಲು ನನಗೆ ಬಹಳ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಇದೆ I would like to add a little bit more about that. Though he is from a bank, uh, Shimoka, and when he has sold the milk, and he has represented India at the World Bank. Oh. And he has completed his MBA from Stanford University. So it indicates that, why I am telling to my students is that, so next other, at the age of 36, he has elevated to this level, whereas representing entire India, by next 10 years, my students should be at least 3 to 10 students of my, this college should represent India as the Sudhir Kumar has, is representing all India. Say yes sir, no. Yes sir. So, yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is our first today's speaker, Sri CS. So they found the CEO at Freedom Act and IndianMoney.com to address today's gathering on skill enhancement for employability and entrepreneurship. So let us have, let us welcome him with a big round of applause. amazing kind words about me. I really don't know uh, whether I really deserve all that, but probably uh, things happen. Uh, so, so today in this uh, session, I'm going to share with you the learnings I've had in the last 36 years of my life. And I'm going to share with you some of these key learnings which can probably help you build your life in a better way. So when I got this topic on employment, employability, skills, career, I, I wanted to start by asking you all, what do you think of career? What is career? What is career? Can anyone answer this question? What is career? Any of you? Can you tell me what is career? We say career building. We want to build our career. And the, the problem here is most of us are being taught that career is a destiny. We think career is a destiny. Career is not a destiny. It's a vehicle to take to destiny. your destiny. It's a vehicle to get to your destiny. So if I want to travel from Bangalore to Mysore, Mysore is my destiny, right? Career is basically the vehicle I take up to travel to Mysore. Similar way, when I talk about career, you want to become a professor, that's a career. But to become a professor, why? Why do you want to become a professor? That why is the destiny, right? So career is not the destiny. So all of us must know what is that you want to accomplish. So when, when people ask me, you know, what is that you want to accomplish? I keep saying only three things in life. One, before I die, I will see a country where Prime Minister's son or Prime Minister's grandson or a security guard son goes to the same school, they get the same education at no cost. If that happens, this country is great. Yes? You all agree with me? Yes, sir. 
because the biggest problem of this country is we are discriminating right in the school, you know, the kindergarten time. So you are rich, you can now go to you know, an international school. Like I have got three kids. I was I was inquiring about. I sent them to an ICSC school, and I was checking with the IB. It costs eight lakh rupee per kid per year. For for LKG, UKG, first standard. So the kind of education which we have today, nothing wrong. That's also right. But the problem is, can we give equal education? Yeah. yeah. I, I request everyone to pay attention. It's okay. Absolutely fine. You can hear me, right? Yes, sir. You can see me later now. <laughs> so, 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 science, please. Listen. So, I need your attention. Guys. Listen. So, now, if we are here to build our career, so now, now I, I said one is that goal, right? where I want to see an equal and free education. And the second thing which has to happen in this country is, I want to see where political rallies have all chairs empty. If any political leader conducts a political rally, there should not be any concern. You know, because if they have that great message to communicate, let them make a video and share it in YouTube. We'll sit at home and watch. I don't want them to bring five lakh people, three lakh two people to a huge stadium or Palace town, and they waste. It's a national waste, and none of us are questioning that. I want to see that day before I die, right? And 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 I was actually questioning this. Assume all of you, you have two cows at home. You get 15 liter milk in the morning, milk in the morning, 15 liter milk in the evening. So you sell 30 liter milk, you make about thousand rupees, and you're happy. You have to feed the cow. Cows two, two, six, two, three times a day. And now, if one of our netas, if they say, I am organizing a rally in Palace Ground, please attend. I'll pay you 1,000 rupees. I'll get you biryani. Will you attend? Yes, yes sir. You will not. Why would you attend? <laughs> <laughs> if you have two cows, if you have two cows at home, you would attend. If you have a small Pani Puri center, you are running somewhere here on the street. You are running a Pani Puri center, you make some 4,000 rupee sales a day. And by selling 4,000 rupee Pani Puri, you make about 1,500 rupee, 2,000 rupee profit a day. If someone says, come for political rally, you won't go because if you go, your competitor will eat your business. Yes. Next day, you have no space to keep your shop there. Correct? Yes, sir. Which means, today, even as we speak, Political rallies are happening there. Lots of people are attending. Do you agree with me? They don't have two cows and a Palipuri shop. <laughs> right? So which means, why is this not being done? Why our education system? See, think about it. When we talk about career building, when we talk about skill set, skilling ourselves, I want you to understand how our economy is being built. So you know, India's economy is currently $3.5 trillion. 3.5 trillion dollars means 1 trillion is about 80 lakh crores, right? So which is close to 3 lakh crores, correct? So which means we are expecting it to hit 5 trillion dollars by, because the original target was 2025, now looks difficult, it may happen by 2027 or 28. But the point here is, this economy, that 5 trillion dollars or 3.5 trillion dollars, is made up of what? Is it just by education sector? Is this just by engineering? Is this just because of software? Is this just because of any other agency company? No. Pani Puri guy, the one who runs a, you know, fish retailing or chicken retailing shop nearby, the one who runs a provision store, the one who runs a departmental store, supermarket, the one who runs a, a chart center, the one who runs a garment shop, saloon shop, spa, the one who produces fish, the one who is into sheep and sheep and goat rearing, the one who is into dairy farming, the one who is into you know uh, fruits farming or vegetable farming, or the one who runs vegetable shop, veg restaurant, garbage restaurant, cloud kitchen, whatnot. 
all these things contributes to our economy. Do you agree? Yes. yes. So tell me, how much of this is being taught in our schools and colleges today? <laughs> and why are we, see, see, do you know, I mean, I'm sure we have got our teachers here, professors here. I, I started thinking deep about it. How did this education system evolve? This education system evolved when <coughs> Britishers invaded into India. Right? Before that, we had our part, you know, Gurukul. Right? And if you ask me, Gurukul is the main reason why Britishers had an easy way to invade into India. Because people may find it controversial, but this is the truth. If Gurukul had access to me, if everyone would have had access to Gurukul, everyone would have been intelligent in India. Which means, Britishers wouldn't have invaded into India. That would have, that would have been easy to invade into India. When there was a restriction for certain se segment of people to get Gurukul education, this happened. Correct? Yes, sir. But then, you think about, Britishers came to India, they started, they started building their education system. Do you know why they built? Because all these trades, guys listen to me please. All these trades which I spoke about, dairy farming, sheep and goat farming, buffalo farming, fruit farming, vegetable farming, or all these trades were there in India even before British invasion. Yes, no? Yes, yes. It was there. Britishers wanted officers, soldiers, police to rule them. They created an education system to rule them, not to make them better. You understand? Even agriculture universities today, people study BSc, AG, MSc, AG, what percentage of them go back and become farmers? No. Negligible. They become agriculture officers. Again, to move the farmers. Hardly anything is being done there. The problem here is, if this country has to prosper, we have to have an education system where these kind of skills are imparted to people. Right? This kind of education has to be done. So my way of looking at this, see, in 2008 we had subprime crisis. When subprime crisis happened, the whole world was affected. India was not that much affected. In 2000 we had dot com bubble. The whole world was in trouble. India was not affected. You know why? Indians, we are self-dependent. We have got small businesses. We have got domestic savings. That's not the case with Western economies. But unfortunately, my biggest worry is now, my biggest fear today, in the next five years or eight years, if you have a recession or if you have a global crisis, India will be affected. You know why? We are more and more dependent on these MNCs. One large company employing lots of people. That's not a sign of prosperity. If you think one large company is employing lakhs of people, if you consider that as a prosperity, that's not a prosperity. Today, you know, in our village, the Wodi Lampeshna Dana Kai Kuri Kai You know how this came up? This came up from this British education system. They wanted to brand their education system. So they started saying everything else is of lower level. Not good, not great. You can't do well here, which means you are useless. You are of no value. They started you know, branding it like that. So now today, in my session, I'm going to talk more about how you can visualize that career, that, that life goal, which is larger than life. Don't pick up so, too you know, small goals now. You have one life. I just finished Kuempu uh, Jayanti celebration today and I, I came here. Since I come from Tirta Ali, I had the privilege of you know, uh, hearing about Kuempu from my very early days, and, and which is like about 6 kilometers from, away from my house. Kuppandi is just 6 kilometers from my house. And when I you know, I mean, for Tirtali people, we have this responsibility. Wherever we go, uh, we have got Kwempu, you know, uh, U.R. Anand Murthy, Kandal Manjab Parshat, Gopal Gouda, such amazing people coming from there. Wherever we go, if we, 
We can't afford to make mistakes now. You know, you have to live a better life because you have the responsibility. Literally bright. We can't spoil it. Right? So when when I when I was talking about Kuempu, I was saying the same thing. I I, I was born in 1986. 94, 1994, Gandhiji passed away. Sorry, uh, Kuempu passed away. And during that time, I, I was thinking, I got electricity in my village when I was in 8th standard. 1904, Kuempu was born. 1904. Which means, up to his 12th standard, he studied there. There was no electricity, no roads, no buses. How did he manage to travel all the way to that school which was about 10 kilometers from his house? And how did he study? Then he finished his 12th and came to Mysore for his graduation. We didn't have buses that time. I don't know how did he even travel. The point here is, today we have got a lot of challenges around us. We have a lot of jokers around us who, who, whose priorities are different. And when you look at that, you also think, my priority is that. Having more Instagram followers are creating a short, a reel, you know, that should not become your priority. You do it if you are communicating something which is great. If you do it, I mean, I'm telling you, if you can appreciate a roadside vendor, a street vendor, you create a reel about him and promote it. Nothing wrong in doing it. But your new hair color should not become a reel. If that is becoming a reel, I'm telling you, you are in a very bad state of mind. Very bad state of mind. So first thing here is to now, when we talk about employability, skill development, first thing is to fix your hardware. You have a phone, right? You know, you, you use, which of the phone you use? If the phone has got good RAM, free RAM, free space, you can install good applications. Yes or no? Yes, sir. If you're trying to go to App Store or Play Store and try to install a new application and you have no space in the phone, does it allow you to install? No. So you have to empty it first. You have to empty it. Take out all unwanted stuff from your side. Which means, if you have unwanted commitments, you promised some childhood friend who is who's totally not doing anything in life, has no ambition in life, and you're committed in that I meet you for a smoke every week. I'll meet you for a cinema every week. Get rid of it now. Get rid of it now. If you're committed to somebody that I will meet you for some play or some video games every week, get rid of it now. First you correct your hardware. Then installing software becomes easy. Right? That's the first thing. So then, I mean like, as I, I was telling you about Gandhiji, sorry, uh, about Kuempu. Uh, so, so, powerful names you keep, you know. So, today, what makes you, what, ma what makes you wake up in the morning without an alarm clock? Without alarm. If you have to wake up at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning, Birds. what what makes you do that? I'll tell you, there's something called biological clock inside you that wakes you up in the morning. If you program your body, program your mind in a way that I have to wake up at this time, I have to start my day with this routine, you will start doing it if you program your biological clock. Right? How do you do that? How do you do that? That's when you need something called motivation. Motivation. So now, I want you to, I'm going to give you a secret today. This is called social motivation. I want you to write down if you can. But remember, these things will truly change your life. Some of these secrets, see, how many of you think I had a good breakfast or I've got energy today? How many of you believe? I had a great lunch today, so I've got a lot of energy. <laughs> no, you don't believe in it. How did you? Because that's what you say. After lunch, it is difficult to conduct a session. People fall asleep. <laughs> Correct, no? So which means you agree with me, food doesn't give you energy. It makes you sleepy. So what gives you energy? 
thoughts. What gives you energy? Thoughts. Great thoughts gives you energy. It is not the food. Agreed? So now, boys, I would request you guys, if you want to add something to my speech, you can come and add it here. I'll give you the mic after my session. Is that okay? All of you, if I'm missing something, you can add it to my speech later. But no speech is there. Okay? So, so now, I'm saying motivation, social motivation. What is social motivation? So we are studying KLE. Now it's 2022. And the sir was talking about Golden Jubilee. And the KLE society has completed already one not eight years, yes. one not seven years. And uh, they're going to have a 150th year celebration. When is it going to be? 150th year? Or 125th, let's say 125th. When is it? I had another, whatever, 17 years, right? 17 years from now. That's going to be about 2040, correct? 2040, we will have 125th year anniversary here in the university, in the, in the KLE institution, correct? Now, 125th university, listen carefully. 125th year anniversary will happen. Now, the college administration has decided to invite all old students. They have taken palace ground, huge place, okay? For a day they have taken palace ground and now, I'm sure, I was reading their million lives, they've changed. So it means probably 8-10 lakh students, but then they assume there are 1 lakh students. 1 lakh old students have, have gathered there with their family, with their kids. 2040 will be married. It's a reality. So now, Imagine the principal will come on stage, okay, and he'll invite five old students to the stage. All other one lakh people are on the audience gallery, but only five old students will come on stage. Or ten, okay, ten, take it ten. So now tell me, who are those ten people? Last mentors. <laughs> yeah, that is the current system. By 2040, things will change. The last ventures who become politicians <laughs> coming on stage is the current India. 2040 India will change. Don't worry. I hope. Okay, but tell me, by 2040, when they celebrate their 125th year anniversary, who are these 10 people who will come on stage? Those who achieve big things in life. Your score has no value. Your score has no value. I have not... Remember that. Your score has no value. It is, it is what you do in life. It is why you do that in life. A real estate developer builder who has made some 500 crore rupee asset may not be called on stage. It is the person who works for some big cause will be called on stage. So have you picked up that larger than life cause which keeps you motivated to be on stage on the 125th year anniversary celebration? Are you going to be on stage? Yes. So if you are, this is called social motivation. Now you, you, you think about it. Just think about it, you get goosebumps. I'm telling you, you just think about that. You have one lakh students in the audience gallery, five students are coming on stage. Who are these five or ten students? Achievers. They've done something big in life. They've done something larger than life. That's what I was thinking today when celebrating Kuenpu Jayanti. It's been like 118 years, right? And he, he passed away about 28 years back. 28 years back he passed away. Even today we are celebrating Kuempu Jayanti and Kuempu Jayanti has become Vishwa Manava Day. Someone who came from that small village, you know, celebrated so well today is only because of that larger than life cause. So my point is, how many of you now have that one larger than life goal and you are committed to it and that gives you that motivation? Anybody has got it already? Do you have a larger than life cause? Very nice. So I think this is how you have to think. And, and, and remember one thing guys, 
all those people who started freedom fight they all they all started with that hope that i will get freedom for india some people passed away within one month of starting the freedom fight some people died or killed by britishers within one year within 10 years but those who were left they were able to do it right but then the point is everyone has contributed now we all need to do that this is a big problem that's why i think india when the sad story of india today in 2022 about 8000 millionaires millionaires means those who have got more than 8 crore in asset wealth they left india they took citizenship elsewhere in this 8000 i've got my 6 7 friends also and these 8,000 people, they gave up their citizenship in 2022 alone. Assume they all have 30 crore worth of wealth, which means India lost 2.4 lakh crore of wealth just in the year 2022. Why? Safety concerns, quality of education, quality of life, so many problems. Now, should we all run away? Fight it, fight back, fix it, connect this society. So now, if you also create a reel about your hair color, others will repeat it. Can you make your reels more thoughtful, intellectual in nature? Automatically things will change. So this should be your motivation. That's the number one thing I want to share with you. The second thing, I want each one of you to think about how you can manage your time. So today, a lot of us have this problem. We think managing time is a big challenge. Right? 24 hours, I've got in classes, complete assignments, meet friends, to play as well. I have to check my WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, so many other things. But my point here is, today onwards, I want you to make a promise. I've got 24 hours. I do an audit of my time. You know, audit of the companies, education institutions, it happens. Similarly, you do an audit of your time. So when you do an audit of your time, you ask yourself, how much of your time you spend is going to put you on stage in the 125th year anniversary? How much of the time you spend today is not going to make you sit on the stage? You ask yourself. We spend only 24 hours, right? We spend it. Is that an investment or is that a spending? If it is a spending, then you have to make investment. Right? You have to use it in learning, you have to use it in building connections, great connections. You have to you know, use that time for creating solutions to our problems. So that's the way to use the time, right? So can you now commit to yourself? that I'm not going to use my time for anything which is not going to contribute to my success in the future. I'm not going to spend my time. i tell you something guys. India is now 140 crore people. Global population is 800 crore. We currently have this rich and poor. Right? But in the next 15-20 years, it's going to be rich and displaced. And slaves have no space. A lot of things will be done by technology. Your robots. AI ML. So which means, if you don't become intellectually strong, it's going to be difficult to live here. Not just in this country, but anywhere in the world. So you have to think about that. I'm telling you, so today when I talk to people, they say, you know, we do these things for kick. Correct? We need kick. Now, you get kicked from various sources. Those who smoke, they get kicked from a cigarette. Those who drink, they get kicked from that drink. Those who read, they get a kick from a great book. Those who watch cinema, they get a kick from a great cinema. Right? Now you have to decide how you want to get that kick. Now this body is going to behave the way you train it. You understand? The body is going to behave the way you train it. If you train that body to become 
to get that kick from the good things you do, it will start doing that. It will start craving for it. If you train the body to get the kick, I mean, start liking the kick which you, which you get, which you buy through cigarette or drink or reels or social media, then your body will start craving for that. So now you decide what kind of kick you want. What kind of kick you want? The good one or the bad one? You don't train for it. I'm telling you, see guys, we need to have patience. Today, we want people to recognize us. So what we do? We think if I color my hair, people will recognize me. Right? If I wear some cranky dresses, I'll be recognized. If you can have patience. See, the, the right way of doing things is actually difficult. It takes more time. You read, you have to have patience. Building a business. I started Freedom App, you know, IndianMoney.com back in 2008 when I was 22. And the kind of struggle I went through. Oh my God. And at one point, I think you, you watched my interview. At one point, I took, after my marriage, in, I got married only, 24. And I converted my house into a PG to survive. Otherwise, I had no money to pay rent. But it takes time to get here. But once you get here, you're going to be celebrated. You understand? Can you imagine Kuempu writing Ramayana Dashanam, for which he got Narapita Award, Padma Bhushan. It's not an easy job. You have to go somewhere. You have to. It is. It is literally like you know. You have to. You have to escape from every other commitment and just stay calm, sit down in a calm place and do that. So now also, when when your lecturer is speaking, you raise hands. You do some monkey job. People will recognize you. Do you need that recognition or the recognition you get on stage? when they celebrate their 125th year of anniversary. You decide that. Now you, you have creativity. I'm not denying it. Everybody is equally blessed. You have creativity, but the creativity is being used to do all unwanted stuff. Because you want people to recognize in the class. You want people to recognize you in the... So for that, can you do some good job? So now, if you start differentiating these two things, you'll have abundant amount of time. You'll be like, oh my God, what do I do with my time? You know, I've got Freedom App. Today, we have about 4,000 employees. I have 97 lakh users using Freedom App. And I have time to come and talk to you here. You see? I have time to talk to you here. You have time. If you decide to make time, you can make time. So learn to manage your time. Time is very precious. So I'll give you one lesson here. So how many of you know about this concept called time value of money? Time value of money? Huh? Time value of money means a site purchased in Rajaji Nagar 20 years back was worth 10 lakh rupees. Today it is worth 3 crore rupees. What is it called? Time value of money. With time, the money value depreciates actually. Right? But you have to invest it to make it appreciate. Right? There's another one. Money value of time. How many of you know money value of time? When I started my first job in 2006 in Bangalore, it was to sell insurance. My salary was 10,000 per month. 8,300 was my take home. Right? So calculate 8,300 divided by 30 days. How much per day? Cal divided by 24 hours. How much per hour? Some 10 rupees, 15 rupees. So today, what is my time value? I was conducting this financial freedom workshop. I used to feel so good. Morning 10 o'clock I used to go there. 300 people used to be in the auditorium. I used to finish my uh, workshop by evening 6, 6.30. And collection used to be 9 lakh per day. I, I make 300 people, 3,000 rupees per person. And it's all on YouTube, you can find it. 9 lakh rupees in a day. A boy from a village was making 10,000 rupees per month, was making 9 lakh rupees a day. That's called money value of 
Try it. You decide to do it, you can do it. So now why someone would pay you 10,000 rupees for hour? Why would they pay you? You should be valuable, yeah? Correct, no? So now, when I talk about time management, this should run in your mind. I am doing everything from my side to increase the money value of my time. Increase the money value of my time. Will you do it? This is the second part. So motivation, time management. The third important life lesson I want to share with you is about learning. You all know about learning, right? <laughs> What's special there? I've got something special. So when we talk about learning, there are three ways to learn. Can anybody tell me what are the three ways of learning? Huh? Louder. So first one is, someone will teach you and you learn. Correct? You are coming to college for that thing. Your professors, your lecturers are teaching you and you learn. That's someone is teaching you and you learn. Correct? Yeah. Now this is something which is very, very common. All of us do it. But 100% of us do it. And I would say 98% people don't go beyond it. I meet people for interview. So when I ask them, which is the recent book you read? They say, what? I say, did you read any book recently? Why should I? So that's the attitude. Our learning stops. So when I finished my graduation, the first commitment, promise I made to myself, I read one book a week every, you know, every week I read a book. And that continued even today. I think the biggest gift I'm going to give it to my children is my, my library. How many of you spend time in reading? Because your thoughts are going to be formed from your memory. You need to feed your brain. Your brain is a very intelligent machine, but you have to give inputs to get output. You don't give input and how can you expect a great output, yeah? Your brain can't see. Your brain can't hear. You've got your ears, you've got your eyes, you have to use them to feed your brain what it wants or what can make it better. Right? So recently something called Chat GPT is launched. How many of you used it? Chat GPT? Open AI. Now you should read it. I'm telling you, this is going to kill millions of jobs in this country, in this world. Chat GPT. You know, if you, I just go to Chat GPT and I tell them, hey, you know what? I, I attended uh, KLE, KLE institution today. I visited them. I conducted a session for so many students on this topic and this is what I spoke. Few important points I will mention. Can you help me write a one page? article about it for my social media post. I just tell this, within next 30 seconds, I have a 1,000 word article ready for me. Chat GPT does it. You know? You all can use it. It's free. It's in beta version now. Just a month back it was launched. It is co-founded by Elon Musk. It is a not-for-profit organization. You check it out. So why am I telling you this? Learning, the first stage is someone will teach you and you learn. So now, for example, I am here to teach you. If you don't listen to me, you don't make notes of my points, or you don't remember any of these things, then second step of learning will not happen. The first step is someone will teach you and you learn. That's called thought. Thought. The second one is, listen carefully, the second one is learn. I read, I watch. I observe and I learn. That is learned. Someone will teach you. Second one is, you read, you observe, you watch and you learn. That's the second step. The third step of learning is interesting. It is called thought. You think and learn. You think and learn. All those who have done inventions, innovations, they got into the third stage of learning. Today we are celebrating somebody's jayanti. They got into the third stage of learning. They got into the third stage of learning. So where are you today? And do you want to get to the third stage? Do you? Yes, sir. So how do you get there? First, do it effectively, the first stage. If you tell your lecturers that, okay, no, no, I am the third category of learner. I will think and learn. I don't attend the class. Then you will never get into third stage. You do the first stage effectively. That's super important. You get it? 
First stage, you have to do it effectively. Listen to people. That's why people say, right, you've got one mouth and two ears. Which means, you should listen twice the amount of, the amount of speech you make. Super important. So now, the first stage is taught. Second stage is learned. So, you know, you read, you observe. The third one is you think and learn, thought. Now the problem is, we are not being taught to do that. How do we do that? How do we get to that stage? So I'll give you a simple exercise. Probably our professors are here, they can also start giving this exercise from now. Every time there's a lecture on some subject, you must have this assignment concept. Unfortunately, assignment is again about reading the textbooks. Now, it should be outside the textbook. Your assignments, your project should be outside the textbook. Only then you will be able to do some research. Search for new information. You will go meet people, discuss about the subject. So you gather information. Then you come in. Add 5% by thinking of your, on your own. Think about that subject and bring out at least 5% extra information, extra knowledge on that subject on your own. That will change your perspective completely. Like for example, when I was in my graduation, we had this uh, project report. I'm sure all of you have this, right? Yes, sir. In the final year, you have to prepare a project report. Yes. So we had one subject less because of that. Mm -hmm. So normally what used to happen is organization study. Copy paste somebody's project report, change your name and any year, date and all that, and the rest all is safe. I told my college, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to prepare a very different project report this time. And that time, Rajiv Dixit, Rajiv Dixit uh, was well known that time for Swadeshi Andolan. He passed away a few years back and he was known for Swadeshi Andolan. He used to talk about how Coke, Pepsi are, are ruining this country, both health-wise, economy-wise. And then uh, I kind of uh, use some sources to reach out to him. Then I got to know that he's coming to Bangalore. He's basically from Gujarat. He's coming to Bangalore. So I spent a week with him. He gave me a lot of inputs. Those days, Pepsi, Coca-Cola Coca used to make about 5,000 crore profit annually. And that was going out of India. So I was like, can't we make our own soft drinks? I mean, are we so bad? Just think about it today, guys. We all need Coke Pepsi. You know, 140 crore people country, we can't make our own soft drinks, yeah? Aren't we ashamed of ourselves? We can't make Instagram of our own. What a software it is. I mean, I'm sure if you make it a project, we can develop our own in the college campus. The problem is that we don't have the commitment. We don't have the patience. So I, I, I told my university about it. They somehow gave me a project because organization study to industry study, there's a difference. So I said this, then I went to CFTRI in Mysore. I was studying in BBM in Shumaga. I traveled to Mysore to meet scientists in uh, CFTRI. I spoke to them about this problem. Then they gave me how to make tamarind juice, this tender coconut package water. This was in 2005, six. They gave me all the technology. Then I came, came and met this horticulture department in Lalba. Then I met the Central Information Commissioner in Bangalore. That time it was KV or Tagore, sir. I met all of them. I collected information. Then I read. Indian Societies Act to understand how we can leverage Societies Act to build our own society, something similar to KMF, Nandini. Correct? Nandini or Amul, are you all aware about it? Yeah. So I, I then prepared this project report called Vision for Indianization of Indian Software Industry. That project report totally, I mean, I created it whether I got, I mean, I, I think someone who copied the project also got same marks almost. Almost I got the same marks, I mean two, three marks more maybe. That's not the point here. It's not about marks. That made this Sudhir a better person. Right? So now, can you get to the second stage? Reading, observing, watching, research. The third stage is thinking. Now whenever you have a complex problem, how many days in a stretch you can think about it? How many days in a stretch you can? Now I mean that decides your stamina. How many days in a stretch you can think about that one problem? Can you respond? 
So you have a problem. Let's say now the problem is you have scored less in your exam, your internals. So now you have to make a strategy for doing well in your final exams. So now that's the problem. How many days in a stretch before you give up? You think about the problem. Do you think about it? Yes, sir. Like for example, in my business, every morning, every evening, I get so many new challenges, so many new problems. And then I have to, have to think about it and you won't believe some challenges we spend two years in a stretch. Some challenges we have to think about it for two years. So like our scientists who built the rocket to send to Mars, how many years they worked on it? It was not overnight here. Yeah? So do you have that capability to hold on to that one idea, hold on to that one great mission and, and find a solution for it? That's the next thing about it, right? So now, now, learning, if you can start thinking in this direction, if you can depend on all the three, thought, learn, and thought, believe me, you'll build a great career. Will you do it? Yes, now the next one. So we discussed about time motivation, time management, time management learning. learning. Now let's talk about people. So all of us have people in our life. Yes? yes sir. Now what kind of people you should have? I believe we need three kinds of people in our life. Let me check. I, so all of you, those are sleeping also. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 uh, three kinds of people. I wanted to do a tick mark. Do you have this kind of people? Do you have this kind of people? Do you have this kind of people? But ask yourself now. Okay? The first kind of people you need in your life. The first kind. The first kind is Role models. Yes, sir. Do you have role models? Yes, sir. If yes, how many? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can have as many as you want. No, you don't have to pay tax to them. Huh? Yes. The best part of role models is you don't have to pay tax to them. Some of them are not even there to collect tax. <laughs> right? Kuembu is my role model. Kuembu is not even there to collect tax. I can read about him, I can learn about this, and I can execute it. Right? Like, I want to become a great businessman. James J.G. Tata too, J.R.D. Tata too, Ratan Tata too, Narayan Murthy sir too. So many of them, right? I can, I, can, I can consider all of them as my role models. I don't need to pay them tax. I don't have to ask their permission. I just have to choose them. How many of you have? But unfortunately, someone who makes a cinema about the underworld dawn becomes our role model. That's the problem. That should not become our role model. Right? The cricket? Not. I mean, see, I believe that, again, this is another problem we've got today. A lot of us are, uh, uh, we have this, we were attracted towards the transy career. I want to become a cricketer. How many can play in Indian team? You have a restriction. Now think about, see, now probably my dad, or if I would have decided that I have to become a cricketer, I would have put my family into trouble. Because I, I badly needed that success for this generation of my family. But now my kids, I can ask my one boy, okay, hey, you become a cricketer, I'll find you. If he doesn't do well, it's okay. If you get to that stage, then you can do it. But not all generations. One generation has to really, I was asking, uh, Vijay Sankeshwar sir has done a course on freedom house about how to build a logistic, successful logistic business. I was asking him, sir, even you're almost 70 plus now, and you're working so hard. Aren't you bored? He said, one generation has to struggle. One generation has to totally struggle. But then the, you'll change the fortune of every other generation in your family in the future. Now you think about it. He has got two private jets. He has a different lifestyle. Everything he has got. So one generation has to struggle. And you, you raise the bar for everybody in the... Right? You, you change the entire society. Just because of VRL. Now Hubli, how much has contributed to Hubli's development? Right? So, so that's the way to think about So now, when you think about role model, I want you to have those large personalities who have done something really big in life, and they always had those ethics, values in life. It's always good to follow them. Sometimes what happens, you know, in high letter, Dev Yes, sir. You know that? Yes, sir. That happens because you're too much into it. So now, for example, 
if I start liking all these role models, naturally, when I read more about them, hear more about them, I follow more about them, I start behaving like them. Actually, they in influence you so much. Right? They influence you so much. Recently, Vijay Sarkish was visited our office. You know, I was like, uh, uh, he called me in the morning at 9.30. Uh, if you're free, I will come. Are you free? I can take about one now. I said, oh my God, sir, you made my day. Please come to office. I mean, he's such an inspiration to us. Been reading about him. I mean, though he has done a course all that, you know, he never visited my office. When he said this, I was so happy. Then he came to office. He spent some good time with his family. His wife also came. And then I was thinking, just think about it. When you, when you follow somebody as your role model and you do well, they come to you. They recognize you. Now you think, no, no, you, you start uh, 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 challenging your parents. Like, you get me this bicycle, then I'll go to school. <laughs> you get me a motorcycle, I'll go to school. Similar way, you ask the role model. You first come and meet me, then I will do it. <laughs> that way it won't work here. Yeah? You do well in life, then I had the opportunity to meet Ratan Tata sir. Such a great man. So I think when you do well in life, you will get to meet them. Nanda Nilekani sir, such an amazing person. I mean, when you when you meet Narayan Mukti sir, I had opportunities to meet these people only because I was able to follow them. Right? It's not the other way around. You understand? So don't expect people to come and talk to you like this and then you follow them. No, that's not going to happen. Right? So the next one is, second kind of people you need in your life is great friends. You need three kinds of people in your life. One is role model. Second, great friends. You want to go to library. The other guy will say, come, come, let's go to form. You should kick him out from your life. Now, you need people in your life who are as ambitious as you are. Your friends should be as ambitious as you are. Now, you change the seats quickly. If I tell you, change the seat quickly. Huh? Shall we do that exercise? Change the seat quickly. If you're sitting next to a person who's, you know, who's a negative person who influences you to do bad things. <laughs> Good. I think that's the quickest decision you've made in life. Start having it. If you think, if you think, Listen, 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 listen. Listen. <laughs> listen now, please. So, so what I'm thinking, what I'm saying is, guys, listen now. If you really want to do big things in life, if you, if you really want to do big things in life, I want you to have great friends. I have very few of them. Huh? Role models, you can have 200. Friends don't have 200, huh? Bad, dangerous, very limited, but great people. Fortunately, I tell you, I, I didn't really have some great friends. Today, I feel very sad. I studied in government school, government college all through my life. I spent only 15,000 for my education up to graduation. Only for Stanford, I spent. That's why I got scholarship. I got some great friends when I went to Stanford. This was an entrepreneurship related program that one year MBA program, because of that, I was able to meet some amazing people. And these entrepreneurs today, I mean, they are like my immediate, immediately I can access them. I have a problem, I can reach out to them. So can you make a promise today, before celebrating New Year, can you download all your, you know, unload all your bad friends? Yeah? That, the target for 2022 is to unload bad friends. Okay? So, coming back. The third category. You need three kinds of people. First one is role model. Second, great friends. Third one. Third one. See, the first and the second, you can choose them. You can choose your role models. You can choose your friends. The third category, you can't choose them. They choose you. Who are they? No. Haters. Then you leave them. Why? No, no. Tell me, tell me. Family. Huh? Family, sir. The third category is called, the third category is called your 
followers. Followers. Okay? If you are doing great job, if you are doing great job in life, if you are someone who's good, then what will happen? They follow you naturally. They follow you naturally. Right? If you if you are not doing good job, for example, a first year graduation student should follow a second year graduation student. Why would they follow you? Only if you are doing good job, right? If you are not doing good job in life, then why would they follow you? Right? So it is super important that you decide to start, you, know, you start doing good job, so people will follow you. Now if you think, hey, I colored my hair last week, this week, this person has colored, so she's following me, or he's following me. That's not following me. Yeah? So I want you to think about I, I, I want to do, I'll tell you, uh, listen carefully, guys. This is something, today, my YouTube channel, Canada YouTube channel has about 1.2 million subscribers. And, and I mostly have about 2.7 uh, million subscribers on YouTube. And, and when I think about it, why do they follow me? Why do they follow me? It, it's just because of the content you give them, right? Otherwise, why would they follow you? Right? If you if you start doing something good, people will follow you. It's not that if you don't start doing bad, people will not follow you. It's happening. Movie stars, some of the movie stars are the great example for They do bad things, but we still follow them. Not all movie stars, but some of them. My point here is a two and a half hour cinema made over two years. Is he your you know, role model? Who do you follow? Similar way, for what job they should follow you? Now the problem is we think, if I become a cinema star, people will follow me. Nah, you should be useful to people, yeah? You should be useful to people, they will follow you. I'll tell you, these are the guaranteed routes to success. I'll tell you, if all of you decide today that we want to become a cinema star, 99.9% .9 of you will fail. There's 0.1% chance one of you may do some do well in cinema. But I will, whatever the suggestions I am giving you, this is 100% guaranteed part to success. So, so if you start doing well, you will have great number of followers. I tell you, I have seen some houses, some families, he has got a, daughter, a sister or he has got a brother, that younger brother or younger sister is not following you. What a shameless person you are, man. <laughs> Think about it. Yes or no? You are the elder brother, elder sister, and your elder sister is not following you. What a shameless person you are. If you start doing well in life, believe me, they will see you as a role model. Yes or no? Yes or no? So I want you to think about, this is about the three kinds of people you must have in your life. Now let's come to the the next phase of it. Now you want to do something in life. With all these things in to back you, you want to do something in life. Now how do you pick the right way to do something or right idea or right, right goal? How do you pick it up? I'm going to give you a matrix. I'll give you a small you know, a, a formula which can help you pick the best thing you want to do in life. The number one you have to understand is Whenever you decide to do something, first thing, is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? Don't do anything if you don't love to do it. If you don't like to do it. First question you have to ask yourself, is this something I want to do for the rest of my life? Can you ask yourself? First question. Second question you should ask yourself, listen carefully. Is this something which I am good at. A lot of times, I want to become a cricketer, but I am not good at cricket, I am playing cricket. I am, or, I, or I want to become an engineer, but I am not so good in engineering. What is that you are good at? So first thing is, what is that you love to do 
for the rest of your life. Second one is, what is that you are good at? These two should match. The third one is, what is that people need? What is this, what is that the society needs? Is there a pro requirement for what you are going to do? You want to become a singer. Is it that so many people are saying, we need singers, we need singers? So, so what is the demand? I'm going to make Pani Puri in the street here, stay. Is it that there, is, there, is, there are so many people who are going to eat Pani Puri in the circle? Or is it that there are no competitors? You ask yourself, whatever you want to do. So that's why I keep saying, whenever you do something, it should be either first or fastest or innovative. First, fastest or innovative. Only then that business succeeds. So but coming back to what you want to pick in your life, Ask yourself, is this something which industry needs, government needs, society needs, companies need? If you are if you going to become a data scientist, data scientist, is it something there is so much of demand for data scientists? Become one. You want to become a great photographer. Is there something there is so much of demand for photographers? So the third one is that. Fourth one. Is it, sir, is it that people are willing to pay for it. Sometimes, stand-up comedy, you make it, people will you know, listen to it. Will they pay for it? Not really, not always. Right? So you have to find out whether this is what you want to do in life. Right? First one is, is this what, what, is this, is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? Second one, is this, you know, are you good at it? Number three, is it that there's a need for it? Is there a need for it? Fourth one, are they willing to pay for it? Are they willing to pay for it? Like, you know, a politician, he's saying, okay, come with me. You know, like I've seen so many people around the ministers and all. If a minister is coming to your office, you'll have 10 people. You may think, oh, these are all his officers. No, they're all jokers. They have no job in life. They just go around him. Right? They have no purpose in life. But they wear some white and white and all that and you see them. But they have no job in life. They are due. One day this minister will help them to get some ticket to contest in some election or to get some project. Right? So now, if people are willing to pay for you, this is something which you need. I mean, which, which people need. This is something you are good at it. This is something you love to do it. You put the Venn diagram. You know Venn diagram? Now, the corner where all these things you know, comes together, that dot is what you should do. Are you getting it? That dot is what you should pick up and do it. Now, for that to happen, you have to study a lot. See, you have one life, I'm telling you. I I'll tell you a reason for this, guys. Listen very carefully. So, whenever I go to ATMs, whenever I go to ATMs, I, I do this, you know, these days we don't even go to ATMs. But those days, I mean, when I was going to ATMs, I used to see these old security guards. Normally, in most of the ATMs, you see 60 plus ATM guards in the night shift, right? I used to ask them, Sir, did you ever think when you were 25 that at the age of 60, you will work as an ATM security guard? For 8 10,000 salary to survive your life. No. I asked them, a 60 year old, 65 year old ATM guard, did you ever think at the age of 25 that you will ever, you know, you, you, you will work as a security guard in an ATM? In my apartment, I know when we meet these old age mates, 60 plus, I asked them, and recently, it happened once in Baswanabudi, Nekkalapa Circle, there was an ATM. This is about 8, 9 years back. There was an old man, maybe 67, 68. After I took out the money, I asked him the same question. He said, you know, sir, I'm, a, I'm an actor. I act in cinemas. I've done 300 cinemas. And he truly, he's an old man, 65, 66. He has done many. When he was young, many people told him, hey, you look good, you look very smart, become an actor. Everybody said. Then he started going around with the directors, everybody. 
They used to hire him for this daily wage thing. For, for cinema, four day, four day 500 rupees, four day 300 rupees, those days 30 rupees, just food. He had this one hope that one day he will become an actor. I mean, a hero or a good actor. But till the 65th year, even then, day shift, whenever they call him, he goes. Night shift, he works as a KTM security guard. This has happened to many people. Like I, I keep telling, many people apply for UPSC. I'm telling you, if you want to apply for UPSC, start right after your eighth standard. Our worst case after 10. Not after graduation to waste your parents' money. Not after graduation to waste your life. You want to do UPSC, start doing it. And if you are not able to talk among your classmates, you can't talk there. Yeah? It's not so easy. It's not so easy. <coughs> I mean, there are exceptional cases. I'm not denying that, but then I want you to understand the current situation. After 22, 23, after post-graduation, some people apply for you know, UPSC. And then up to 28, 29, up to their marriage, they keep writing. And what is the success percentage? 0.1 percent, huh? 0.1 percent. Out of 1,000 people who write, 1 percent clears it. Now, what will happen to 999? The same like these actors who wanted to become a cinema you know, hero, but eventually becomes a side actor, paid 500 rupees per day, 800 rupees per day. So, my point here is. Whenever you pick up an idea, pick up a, you know, a career path, make sure that you are, you are ready for it. I mean, this is, in the, this is in the right direction. If you pick it up, you will do well. So the last part of my speech. You, you have now kind of understood about the hard head part of it, the basic software part of it, the, the motivation, time management, people, learning, all that you learn. Know. Then I spoke about how to pick the right career path. Now the last part of it. Guys, anything you do in life, anything you do in life, I want you to have few core values. And you should never compromise with those core values. Because life is very flashy. Life is very colorful. You can do anything. And a lot of times what happens, you get opportunities to get cut up. So have some core value. I call that a social responsibility. Have the social responsibility. So it's, it's like this, right? Whenever I earn a rupee, I ask this. Is this my income, my society's income, my country's income? If it doesn't tick all the three, then I don't need this money. That's not my income. Only if I am earning money, but it is harming my society, it is harming my country. That's not income, yeah. That's cheating. That's not the right way of making money. We have to make money. We have to grow well in life. We have to do big things in life. But remember, earn for self, society, and the nation. If all three are ticked, that means you're doing great job, right? Many people today they evade tax. Just because they want to gain on it. Right? Or they harm others. Just because they want to gain on it. Don't do that. I'm telling you, people say, I mean, I think uh, two years back, in one of the assembly sessions, the current law minister and the parliamentary affairs minister, Madhu Swami, in his speech, he was speaking about this. Today, who is making money? He was saying, who can make money? Who is earning? Those who have money, they invest money, they earn money. Others are not doing it. I, I, I completely, I, I, I disagree with this you know, statement. This, that speech is available on internet. He says, people who have got money, they earn money. Others can't do it. That's totally untrue. Narayan Murthy didn't have money. These days, I mean, I didn't have money, man. There are so many people you will know. You, 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 I'm, I'm sure you know them. In your surroundings. They didn't have money. I will take you to hundreds of small business owners, 
farmers who had no money they started from scratch today they are you know grows together all in the right direction right way i can give you hundreds of examples so it's wrong the problem here is we are making people weak we don't make them think big like i told you those who have got two cows at least they think about the third cow right those who get 20 kg rice every month they don't think big of the cow idea they think about the 5 kg sugar baby or atta you understand what i'm saying i get it the, the the whole concept has to change and this is all in our hands now we are the architects of this future india now if we don't take the responsibility believe me either you will you will do well in life you will move out of this country or you will not be able to live in this country you will be like a slave but if we take control of the situation today if we decide who to choose like how many of us is it that today in every village i have seen people in the cities people distributing money to get votes we are we all have smartphones i i keep checking this actually in the internet in the youtube how corrupt these people are you know you search for keywords like politician distributing money for votes you will not get any video hardly any we all have smartphones man it is happening right in the day life and we are not capturing that we are not shaming them yeah we are not bringing them to justice we are not doing it and that is creating this bigger hole that is creating this bigger hole so all of us i'm telling you if you are right if you are not corrupted if you have the intent to do well you are willing to work hard i promise you you have a great career you pick this I, I i never wanted to tell you about some career i gave you the secret formula to discover what you want to do in life so you pick it up now but then once you pick it up stay committed to it i was i was listening to gautam adani the adani group owner he was saying when in his childhood after his school he dropped out of school and he came out of his home with two learnings he said one is to stay committed to the promises i make to myself second one is to stay committed to the promises i make to others two simple life lessons stay committed to what the promises you make to yourself stay committed to the promises you make to others if you can just follow this simple mantra in life believe me big things can happen i wish you all the very best i hope you enjoy your session and if you have any questions you have to ask
political leaders, some great experts in the parliament, just to discuss about education reform. 10, 12 days, just a fully power packed 12 hour discussion only on that. Now let me come back to your question. Now what time you come to college? How many periods do you have in the class? Every day. Five. Five. And once you go home for studies, how much time you have to spend? Sir, usually I am not getting any for studies. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I get into 12 o'clock uh, practice, sir. After practice, uh, I am a co player, sir. Okay. I get into play and complete and travel for a one and a half hour. I read a book of Krishna for a while. After reaching home, I get into my father's shop. And after getting back to home, uh, 10 o'clock, I will be tired, which makes me that. Uh, what are you studying here? BA, sir. B.A. Yes, sir. Why did you choose to do B.A.? I uh, had an ambition to become an uh, I.E.S. I.E.S. Okay, okay. U.P.S.C. Yes. Have you started preparing for it? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So now, you only spend five hours in the college and B.A. subjects, if you are attending proper five hour classes, more than sufficient, there is no need to go home, study, prepare and all that. Not much of work. I can at least tell you. With the right credit B.B.A., just the class, Patient hearing was good enough. There was no much work, right? It is even our lecturer, professors, even if they give us assignments or whatever, it is, to, it is just to make sure that we learn. If you are able to participate in the class, learn everything properly, then I don't think you have to spend five hours back at home to do it. Now you mentioned you are currently spending time in your father's business. How much time you spend there? As you say, three to four hours. Three to four hours a day, yes. and uh, I really don't know about your economic condition. But the three to four hours, if you have to hire another boy or somebody to work there, how much it would cost? Uh, it will cost uh, ten thousand to fifty thousand for three four hours. Uh -huh. Some part time there. Yes. But uh, we can arrange. Uh, but uh, I get a feeling that uh, why should uh, we pay? Yes. So we have to decide. See, priority is singular, not plural. <laughs> Priority is singular. singular. You can't have priorities in life. You understand? Yes, sir. You can't have priorities in life. It's the same priority. You decide whether you be a C or you want to become a businessman. You want to become a businessman, be with your father's business, develop it, make it good. But see, in the current stage is you have very limited time. You, you have to do well. I recently met a uh, UPSC coaching center. He was talking about UPSC at 21. So we have launched this new uh, coaching initiative where we start right after the 10 and make sure, I mean, at least those who contribute, those who study well, prepare well, by the time they finish 21, 22, they should become IAS officers or IPS officers. That's what we prepared them for. So now you have to have that as a goal. So now, if your parents are willing to support you, with that 8,000 rupees or 5,000 to hire somebody to support your father in business for 3-4 hours, then you have to dedicate that 3-4 hours for your UPSC. If you, see, players understand, Indians are too good in playing victim game. What is victim game? What can I do? <laughs> huh? Nothing is in my control. I am health players. Victim mode. Stop doing that. Find a solution. So now you have to make a decision. If you think your parents are not in a good position to even spend that 5-6 thousand rupees to appoint somebody to help their business, which means you have to now think, are you really poised for UPSC or should you do something else? Because the success rate in UPSC is different. You have to take that into consideration. Right? So if I'm, I'm not denying, I'm not saying that you should not do UPSC. There are a lot of these IAS officers today, they are from extremely poor family. Some Shetasar who came today, he was with me in the other function today, he was saying, up to 12 started reading the slippers. Up to 12 reading the slippers. And then he became a lecturer, then he, he was a lecturer, he was saying three years, he was teaching here in KLD, then he became a, a, a KS officer, then he got promoted to IAS, all that. So now, you have to make a decision. So guys, life, in life, Many things are in your decisions, the decisions you make. So now, have you started the coaching or have you started taking? Step study and uh, help from teachers. Have you given a mock exam? No. Yeah, I took it. 
What is your score in the comment? Are you in the top 5%? Yes, sir. Are you in the top 5%? Yes, sir. Very good. Give a video. All the way. So now I'm going to say, if you get an account, please do that. They can offer I have been stuck between it. Then you should not. I mean, you will come out of it. See, freedom is where freedom is only in your in your mind. You decide. Do you need freedom? Then you will come out of it. Right? I, I, I was celebrating a big party and having a dairy farm. At the age of uh, six, 16, 20, 16, 17, you know, I was earning 40, 50 thousand rupees, 60 thousand rupees. And when I, during this big party thing, I was doing a lakh rupee every three months from the big party. But then, I decided I have to do well in my. I've learned enough practically. Now I have to learn theoretically also, do well in my studies. I came home. I gave up completely all my businesses. Then I got to graduation. And, and then we spoke about my university topper thing. I was the university topper in graduation. Do you know my 10th standard score? Yes, sir. 40%. 40%. So my point here is, now you have to make a decision between these two. And, and I'll tell you one other thing. Uh, since you're speaking about it, I think, I'm sure you would have heard there also. After my, I mean, during my graduation, I was taking coaching from time institutions for MBA. I started my own coaching training. So if I am like you, what I would do, I will join a coaching center along with my classes. I will talk to my principal and I tell him, can you give me the classroom for one hour after our class hours? I will conduct UPSC coaching for my own class. Whatever you study there, you come and practice here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So when you were in the, what was your ambition? Have you ever thought that I would be a this much successful man? So I think uh, when I was in my 10th standard or up to 10th, I was like, I want to become a doctor. Oh. After say, my 10th score, I gave up that. <laughs> Very, so I think uh, that evolves. Don't get married to, I mean like, see a lot of times what happens, your decisions are made with the limited information you have in your mind. Right? And at those, you know, at, at that age, it's okay to make that correction. Okay to make that correction. And and one thing one thing I knew, see I I I knew one thing that it's not about success, not about money. Right? Yes, so you will you'll soon hear about Freedom Map raising a large round of funding in the newspaper. So now that funding round which we are raising is valuing the company at whatever price, money, valuation. That's not the real success. The real success is what are you really serving? What impact are you making? When I go meet people, they say, hey, you know, because of you, because of Freedom Map, we started Dragon Fruit Farming. Because of Freedom Map, I started that wood press you know, uh, uh, groundnut oil business. Because of you, I got into candle making business. Because of Freedom Map, I started some other business. When we hear that, we feel such. So point here is that the definition of success you have to decide now. Don't worry about how to get there. Worry about the definition of success. Definition of success should not be just money. I think money will follow it. Like I got married 12 years back and in the last 12 years, I've never taken my wife or my family to any place just for holiday, just for vacation. And we've gone to many places only because of work. And they say, right, Swami Karya Swakarya. Both happens. You start doing well in life. So success is basically that, right? Yeah. Sir, I have a question. Do you believe in luck, sir? Do you believe in luck? I consider luck as, you know, when, when preparation meets opportunity, that's called luck. When preparation meets opportunity, that's called luck. If you prepare, you will get it. Yeah? Sir, uh, in some situations, uh, they have worked hard as a sir, uh, but they don't get success. Yes, uh, so, uh, what is uh, so some suggestions? No, no, I tell you. So this is a very important thing, guys. 
working hard. Uh, like there are so many people, they work very hard. The problem here is this, right? Friends, listen very, very carefully. This is, I'm sure, it, it will change your thinking from today. A lot of people believe this. I am, I am like, I'm, I'm studying very hard. I don't get good school. Or I am working very hard. I'm not making good money. But if you think and observe closely, these people are limited by their thoughts, not opportunities. Opportunities they have equal access. Because they have limited thoughts, they don't explore big things. They don't explore big things. Just to give you an example, someone who started MTR, Mawali Tiffin Group, like any other destinies here, built something like MTR, which is today doing about 850 crore revenue every year. They sold the company back in 2006-07 for I think 600 crore or so. They were doing about 250 crore business that time. I recently happened to meet Maya sir. He visited our office. He was talking about this MTR store. Now, how many Darshinis have become NPR kind of global brand? They also work hard. He also works hard. Today, Sadhana Maya sir, when you meet him, you know, he is a food expert. Food expert. Indian Army, when they, they, when they wanted to design a, a carry bag with all those essentials for soldiers, they came to him. They said, currently the bag size is about 25 kg. Can you reduce it to 21 kg? With the same message, he leveraged his expertise to reduce it to 12 kg. And this is a case study. In nanotechnology, he is an expert. So the point here is how much of preparation you do? Just hard work, physical labor, right? So now that's what I call laziness is about two types. How many of you can relate to it? You think about it. There are two kinds of laziness. One is physical laziness. I can't wake up in the morning. I know I can't walk. I know I can't sit and sit. The physical laziness, the mental laziness is I can't think. A lot of these people who work hard, they're physically working hard, mentally no. So you should kill that mental laziness to think big, think deep about that problem. And then obviously they find solution. Because I've seen so many people. I'll give you one example about a farmer. Huh? This farmer is from uh, uh, Dandeli in Hubli. Okay? This farmer, actually he didn't have a land also, not much, very limited land here. Then he had some small money that too he borrowed from people. He bought some three acre land for a cheap price. Then he called that as Kadu Mane homestay. He converted that into a nice homestay and, and it's actually raw. I mean, he has not spent much money on it. Today, it is booked for next six months. Just four rooms. Next six months it's booked. But then he started saying, Dandeli is like a tourist place, a lot of people visit there. So he thought, can I make more business there? Then he created something called Eco Shop. Whatever was being made by women in that bed, he bought all that and he started selling in that Eco Shop. Then he thought, I want to do something more. Then he started honeybee farming. When he started honeybee farming, he started thinking about it. How many people knows how honey is produced? They don't know. So why would I start something called Honey Park? He created a ticket for it, 100 rupees, 50 rupee tickets. For kids 50, for adults 100 rupee tickets. You can now take a demo of how honey is being produced with real honey bees, with bee boxes, practically. And at the end he gives you one spoon of honey, pure honey. When you taste it you'll feel, wow, is this honey? Because the one we buy it here, it's not honey. It's jaggery. Right? And then, then he sells honey for 1200 rupees a kg. The normal honey rate which farmers get is 300, 400 rupees per kg. He sells it for 1200 rupees a kg. You know, he has done a course on Freedom App about both the businesses. So I, I, I was amazed when my team went and shot that one course and they came back. I said, I want to personally visit. Then I took, I took my family and I went to that place. I shot another course there with it about the honey park, Agri Pradyosha. The point here is, the difference between hard work and luck is, you know, this. The luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You have to be prepared. Today that person can, you know, like, you know, all these celebrities when they go there, they visit them. So I think that's the way to think about any solution, any problem. That's the way to approach it. Yeah? Are we done?
you know UPSC in its original format it was created by Britishers and why did they create? They wanted to create this collector. Then one second. Hello, hello. Do you know the original job of IAS is? Collector. Collector means what? No. Collection of taxes. It was basically the collector job. So even today many people say uh, IAS officer job is collection and reception. <laughs> collection is what? Collect taxes. Reception is what? Some new minister has come, salute him. Are receiving and go around with him. Basically that job they do. The point is, British education system branded that as the highest authority and even today. In fact, IAS officers, whatever the laws you see today, are all made by IAS officers, IPS officers. That's a different level of kick. Do you need that kick? You want to make, and the kind of respect they get. So I agree, they, they work with ministers, so, you know, they have to work with politicians, all that. But then, the kind of respect they enjoy also. Oh, they are like a, a district collector is like a, lives in a massive four acre bungalow now. You know, they live in a, but with everything. It's a different level of kick. What do you want you have to decide? So problem, I think, you know, career guidance. Guys, one second. Career guidance. If it is there to help people visualize what kind of life. Like my kids, if you ask today, they've seen me leaving home at 8.30 in the morning, coming back at 11 in the night every day, seven days a week. Now my one son says I want to become a scientist, other says I want to become a pilot, the other says I want to become a prime minister. <laughs> so, so, a three boy. And all three says different things, nobody wants to become an entrepreneur because it's the visualization they've got. After seeing, you know, me, then, so the point I'm trying to tell you is, do you want to make a judgment? Do you want to protest against it? Or do you want to make a decision? Make a decision. Huh? Decision. You make a decision. You want to protest? Freedom Park. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 